Hi everybody and welcome to uh, my kitchen, my name is Siobhan Sweet and today we're going to be making Bakewell tarts, one of my absolute favourites. So here we are here, I've just made some, I'll bring them up to the camera, I'll just move that slightly. Um, I've got three different varieties there, we've got the feathered one, we've got the cherry with the icing on and we've got the flaked almonds on top. I think the flaked almonds is my favourite but I could eat any of them with a cup of tea. Let me just move that slightly up a bit so you can see me a bit better. Is that okay? Brilliant. Okay, so I'm going to make a very quick sweet pastry. Um, and we're going to add, there's 100 grams of flour in there. Hi everybody coming in. I have moved my camera, I don't know why I've moved it so far away. <laughs> because uh, I can't hardly read comments, but yeah. Um, so we've got 100 grams of flour in there and we've got 50 grams of butter. And I'm going to take that to a breadcrumb. Ooh, let me just take that watch off there, don't want that. There we are. Um, so, remember when we're doing sweet pastry, we've done it before, we're just using our fingertips. Say hello when you come on, and let me know where you're coming on from. I'm going to have to move close to the camera today, uh, just so I can see. We've got uh, Kathleen, we've got Frank, we've got Baz, we've got Kelly, Carl, uh, we've got come on Zoom as well, which is fantastic. Nice for you to join us on this lovely sunny day. Um, so, we're taking that to breadcrumbs. Now, remember last time I said when you're doing breadcrumbs, we're lifting it up to get the air into it. We want nice, light, flaky pastry. We're not using our hands. So if you look at your hands, your palms should be nice and clean, no flour. Hello, Rolo. Rolo is here today. Are you, Rolo? In fact, we've got a little trick for you. Come here, step. Come step. Come step. There you see. He wants to say hello, aren't you? Can you see him there? I don't know if you can see him <laughs> in the background looking over. Yeah, it's very nosy, aren't you, Rolo? So yeah, he's my chocolate hoover. For those who haven't met him before, he comes around and hoovers up after me. Got a few more popping on Facebook, which is fantastic. Welcome everybody, welcome to my kitchen today. One of my little favourites. I've got the kettle ready for a nice cup of tea. I have to eat those, I've been so tempted. Okay, so once we've got into that, I'm just going to show you some nice fine breadcrumb. Can you see that there? Don't worry, there's an odd little lump in there. Hi, Joan, Jenny, welcome. Oh, sorry, sorry, Rayla. Okay, so that's that ready for our sweet pastry. And I've got half an egg. Now, I'm only doing a small amount because I'm just going to be the size of the house by the time I've finished all this cooking, I tell you, because I can't let it go to waste. Um, and in here, I'm adding 25 grams of sugar. Now, if we remember last time, we don't put the sugar in here because it'll end up with black spots on your pastry. We're going to dissolve it with the egg. Just give that a little mix round. That's all you need. Put a little well in the, in the middle. And put that into there. Then you're just going to get your hand and work around the outside. Don't put your hand right into the middle of the egg because you'll get a big sticky mess otherwise. So just bring that together. Now, ideally, you should leave sweet pastry to rest in the fridge um, for approximately half an hour. But you can use this, and I'm gonna show you how to use it. So I'm, remember, I'm not making a dough, so I'm not kneading it. I'm just lightly bringing that together, okay? If you overwork it, your butter's gonna go soft, and then it's gonna crumble when you try and roll it out in a bit. Okay, so that's my sweet pastry made. I would wrap that up in cling film, but we're not going to. We're going to work straight with it today. I'm going to show you how you can work with it. And we need a little bit of flour on your table. Not too much flour, just a little bit. So we're going to skim like a stone. Okay, and I'm just going to cut this in half. Now, I'm making these nice little individual ones because I think these are gorgeous. You can make, these can make about a seven inch flan ring. So obviously if you want it bigger, then just double the pastry recipe up. Just a gentle knead, not too much. And then one roll and turn your pastry, one roll and turn. That way it's not gonna stick to your table, okay? Tiny bit of flour on there because it's so fresh. One roll and turn, and that's it. That's all you're gonna do. Just keep turning that pastry. I'm not even lifting, I'm actually sliding around the table. Just checking for comments there. Okay, so once you've got that, a nice thin pastry, 
Then you can use your rolling pin. If you're doing a big one, always use your rolling pin to fold up with and just fold it. Push that over the top. Now just be careful that you don't put your rolling pin too low and cut the top there. So just drop it in. Now this is where most people go wrong. I like to give them a top tips as we go down time. So the top tip today when you're doing pastry is lift the pastry up and push it down. Don't stick your finger in there and push it because it'll cause the pastry to shrink. So I'm just going to push that in and we're looking for a nice degree corner. So those who have been in my kitchen before, you've seen me do this and talk about the 90 degree corner. So important when you're lining flan rings. If you don't get the 90 degree corner so it goes like that into the corner, then it's not going to work. Your paste, well, it will work, but your paste will be very it'll shrink down the edges and we don't want that to shrink. So once you've got it into the corner, before you cut it, I'm just going to show you, can you see there, right in that corner, you can see it's a nice 90 degree corner. Then I just tend to use a rolling pin rather than mine. Always round that. Nice and quick. And that's how you line them. Now, I'm not going to line them all. I'm just going to do one and show you as we go, just to speed this up. But I've noticed some people blind bake these. Now, I do not, not, not blind bake these because when you blind bake something, it's normally with different temperatures. So let me give you an example, an egg custard. It cooks at 150 degrees, that cooks at 185 degrees. So they're not gonna to work together, so you would blind bake that. A sponge is what we're doing today, it cooks at 185, that cooks at 185 and they both cook for 20 minutes. So that's perfect. So don't blind bake them. I know some recipes say don't, but if you look at the bottom of mine here, can you see the color of those? And they haven't, they haven't been blind baked and they're perfect, nice golden colour there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is make the filling. So we'll just wipe this down a little bit. I would like to work nice and clean. Roll those here, waiting for the crumbs to fall on. Okay, so once we've got that mix there, it will make me three of these. So that's nice. I'll do those later on. Um, let me just bring in the mix. So in here, I've got, this is the frangipan now. It's what we call frangipans, the almond mix. I've got 100 grams of butter and 100 grams of sugar. Now you're gonna cream that till it's nice and light. Now, to be honest, I'm gonna be honest with you, I've done mine on the machine. If I can get on the machine, I'll use the machine. I've only took it off because it's gonna to be too noisy and you won't be able to hear me. So I look like I'm doing it by hand, but I've actually put that on the machine. And I always say another tip today, I'm full of tips today, is the, the whiter, the lighter. So the whiter you get that mix, the lighter your mix will be when it comes out. And that's always a rule of thumb, because this is a sponge at the end of the day, this is what we're make, making. Hello everybody coming on Facebook, see a few more there. It's Rebecca, um, Sharon, hi. So just beat that together and then you're gonna get your eggs. So we've got two eggs in there. Move that out of the way, into there. And just give them a little mix round. We're going to add this slow dish, not too slow. Little bit by bit. If you put too much in there, you're going to be chasing it round. So just blend that together. You can do this on the machine. You know, I, I would do this bit on the machine to be honest. It's quick, it's easy. And why not? Save yourself this time. But I suppose we could be doing our workouts while we're doing this, but I could do a, a workout, a food workout video. Someone's asked me a question on Zoom. Let me just get a bit closer. Hi everybody, I'm sorry, Chef, for joining a bit late. Oh, no problem. It's my uh, it's as it's my birthday today. Hello, happy birthday, Anthony. And we are seven hours ahead, and my mum is sending me love. Oh, lovely Anthony, happy birthday. Don't worry, you can watch the recording. In fact, that reminds me, I've been really good over the weekend. I've been learning how to be very impressed. When you've got my YouTube channel now, I'm gonna put the recipes and I've learned how to embed them into the rest into the um, video. So when you go on, my, on this video later on, I'm gonna edit it and I'm gonna put the recipes in there rather than showing you the piece of paper as we go. So that's starting to curdle a little bit, like scramble. Don't panic. As soon as you have the flour and the almonds, so in here I've got 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of almonds. 
and that'll go in there. Just add a little bit, just to stop it scramble and beat it round. Okay. Time a bit more. Oh, I've got some exciting news to tell you. More news, more news. Um, we are going with the World We My Class 9 um, on to Radio Merseyside uh, interviewing me on Friday. So that's going to be about half past 11 ish um, Friday morning. So they want to know what we're doing on our Facebook Lives and how we're doing everything. So, yeah, we've got an interview. Had another interview yesterday by another journalist. So, lots of people watching us, what we're doing. And at the end of the day, we've done them to help people. I love helping people at home in kitchens, giving them some ideas. So that's looking nice now. I'm going to put all the flour in there and the ground almonds. Now my last little thing I put in is the almond essence or extract. So do we know what the difference between an extract and an essence is? Another tip of the day. I would always know, I don't like using um, false flavours like oranges and lemons and, and things that you can buy from the supermarket. I would always prefer to use fresh, but I do love almonds, I love the smell of almonds, and I don't use an essence, I use an extract. So an essence can be manufactured, an extract, I, that's how I remember it, is, is it extracted from the fruits or almonds or whatever, so it's more pure. So I like to use this, and I do like quite, I like them quite strong. Okay, so I've just put two little capfuls in there, they will be quite strong. Um, I was going to tell you something else, I just suddenly thought something else. What was I going to tell you? I don't know, it's gone. Gone from my thoughts, Roland. It'll come back to me. Okay, so that is ready to go. Now, I would always use a piping bag, just to fill your moulds up with. The reason I use a piping bag, I'll show you when you put the jam in. You don't have to, you can use a spoon, but we just need to make sure that the jam is sealed. Oh, I smell this is lovely. That's ready to go. So I've got some jam here. I've just used a nice raspberry jam. And you're gonna put, I put a nice dollop in the bottom there. Now when I do it, I don't take it right to the edge. I'm gonna put one and a half in there actually. Just a tiny bit more. I'm just gonna show you, don't take it right to the very, very edge because what happens is, if you take it to the edge, the jam boils up and it can come out the side. So once you put the sponge mix, it creates a seal. That's why I use a packing bag. So I don't know if you can see that there, let me show you. There, okay. And then we're just gonna cut this. My scissors here we go. On here. And we're gonna pipe that on. So start on the outside and seal it round. That way there, the jam's not gonna come up round the edge. If you start in the middle and work outwards, you jam another tip and jam the jam's gonna come out. It's all just full of tips today. And you're going to take it there. Now, you may want to put um, flaked almonds on top of that. I actually love them with flaked almonds. So, just put quite a nice big handful on there. They're going to go into the oven for, I'll do obviously do the rest later. Um, 20 minutes, that's all it takes. 185 degrees, I like lots of almonds. And that's it, and you're gonna, they're gonna end up looking like that. Now I'm gonna show you how to glaze one. Okay, how to do the feather icing on top. Um, because obviously it's everyone's preference, do you like it with the feathering, do you like it with the cherry, or do you like it with the almonds? I like the almonds the best. I do like the icing as well, but I think I prefer the fondant. So, let me just move this out of the way. And we'll make the icing. Have any questions today? Again, very quiet, aren't we? 
So in here, I've got 100 grams of icing sugar. I've already sieved it already, always sieve your icing sugar, it's a devil for getting lumps in. And then I've got a tiny bit of water. Now, it doesn't look a lot of water. The mistake people make is they add too much water thinking that ice and sugar will sink down. So I actually like to weigh everything because if I said to you two teaspoons, your teaspoons are bigger than my teaspoons and you'll end up with a, either a runny mess or it's too thick. So in there, I've got 14 grams of water. Now, my scales are very accurate, the digital scales. So those ones that bounce back and forth, you're not going to get 14 grams on those. And just add that and bring it together. Now I've just realised I got carried away this morning, icing those, taking photographs um, <laughs> of them for YouTube and I haven't left one plain to show you but what I'll have to do, I'm going to sh I'll show you how to do it, I'll just re-ice one over the top. Okay just keep going, keep going and keep stirring in the dry ingredients. So if you can see there in the corner what I do can you see that there? I've got that bit there and I'm just adding the icing sugar as I'm mixing. Okay. Hello, Claire Laura, how are we? Are we all right? Another pastry chef there coming on. So blend that together. So yes, those who live in Liverpool, and as I can see a few in Liverpool, radio, radio, uh, BBC Radio Merseyside, Friday, I'll be on chatting about what we do on our Facebook lives. I've also, I know what I was going to tell you, I've also started on the YouTube channel doing top tips because I do give you lots of top tips as we go. And I've started actually video recording very short clips of things. So I've actually video recorded this morning, putting the icing on top of these. They're just small three minute clips. Excuse me, Rola. Someone's asked me another question. Can we use amaretto on the liqueur? Oh yes, Anthony. That is gorgeous. I love that. Yes, you, you can. You can use amaretto. I'm a bit of a fan of amaretto. Yeah, definitely. You've got to be careful though because you don't want to add too much liquid. As soon as you start adding too much liquid to your mix, you're going to knock the mix out. So that's the only thing with that. But don't go too mad thinking you love amaretto and you're throwing loads in. Because it will make your sponge quite firm. I know what I was going to tell you. Right, when we, come to, when we came to make the filling, I use, if you notice, 50 grams of almonds and 50 grams of flour. Now, if you're going to make a true frangipan, you'd use more ground almonds, but ground almonds are very expensive, um, so a lot of people use half and half and use the extract as well. Okay, let me just put my chocolate in here. Hopefully, I'm going to give that a tiny blast. That is ready. I actually keep my packing bags and let them set and I'll try and reuse them as long as you do them gently. Um, but I actually have, someone asked me the other day how to make a packing bag, so that's what gave me the idea to do the top tips. And I've done how to make a python bag on YouTube, so if you, if you want to have a look at that, if you're not sure how to make python bags, the only problem with doing it this way, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rip it and start with a fresh one. Put that in there. So remember, fold those edges over and roll it down, getting this pressure. And I'm just going to snip off a tiny bit. on plate just to check it's the right thickness yeah that's lovely and always put your piping back can you see that there upwards don't put it on the, on your cold table right i think the icing is just about right it's thick it's holding it's if, it get, if you get it too thick you see it's just falling there that's probably the thickness you want it's too thin it's going to run off so let me get a palette knife now Let's see which one's hard. Right, just I'm gonna take cherry off that one. I'm gonna just re-ice this one just to show you. I got carried away this morning. There's too many. So put a, a dollop on there. 
going to be a nice thick ice one, isn't it? With your palette knife, just shimmy to the edge there. Don't worry, lots of time to show you that. All the way around. And you just tap the edge, just tap it, not find its own level. Okay? And then we're going to put the chocolates on top. When I spin, I just you go over the table. So hopefully you can see me, let's see if I can move a tiny bit closer, it's about as close as I can get for you to see. And then you're going to spin across, just nice and even like that. And you're going to get to create that on it there. Then you're just going to take a knife, and I tend to go straight down the middle, the back of a knife, straight down the middle, straight down there again. And there again, and then spin it round and go around the other side. And that just gives you that feathering effect. It really is simple to do. You've just got to make sure that your white icing is thick enough. I'm just going to wipe that around the edge there. Can you see that there? That's nicely done. Okay, have we any questions? Are we all right? Well, that is our Bakewell tart made. So all I need now is a lovely cup of tea. Uh, I need to finish those others off actually first, because once I get in the sunshine and the Bakewell tart, there'll be no stopping me. I'll be out there all day. So I'm going to finish these other ones off. Um, that's it for today. What did I say I was going to make? I haven't quite decided. Um, I think I'm going to do Viennese biscuits on Friday. I think that was in my thought process. So thank you very much for joining me today and uh, look forward to seeing you on Friday.